mission trip this past summer with the Episcopal Diocese. It was a one-week immersion of service into a struggling community. Our primary goal was to go out and paint dilapidated houses. I participated in this service project for the past two summers. But this past year, we did something in addition to just painting houses. Half of the day, we would go paint houses, but the other half, we explored food deserts. Not food desserts, food deserts. You might be wondering what a food desert is. A food desert is an area where healthy and affordable food is not accessible. And in the city where this trip took place, as many as 88,000 people lived in food deserts. Imagine 88,000 people, mothers and fathers, struggling to provide something healthy for their family. Children, teens, and toddlers, all unable to find something decent to eat. 88,000 people in just one city. So on one of the mornings, after a hard and sweaty morning of painting houses, I went with my painting group to a nearby food desert community. Our mission leaders asked us to put ourselves in the shoes of the people that lived in this area. And in this community, the nearest source of food was a gross old gas station where families could buy cheap but unhealthy meals. These families struggled to feed their children. Concerns for nutritious foods are replaced by the need to squelch the rumbling tummies of their children. And to simulate this community struggle, our mission leaders asked us to buy the healthiest meal we could find to feed a family of four within a very, very small but common budget for this area. And I'm not going to lie, it was really hard. Many products were expired, rich in fats and sugars, and mainly considered snack foods. We walked out of that gas station with canned beans, canned greens, a small bag of rice, and milk that was set soon to expire. I reflected on the fact that what I just did as an experimental task is how many people live their everyday lives. And living where I do, it seems unimaginable to eat these gas station foods for a meal. Eighty-eight thousand people in just one city without access to healthy and affordable food. So where do you think I was during this mission trip? The thing is, I wasn't in Honduras, or Kenya, or Mexico. I was over the mountain, our mountain. I was seven miles from here. I was in downtown Birmingham. 88,000 people without access to healthy and affordable food. How could so many people without access to food live right around the corner from me, right in communities I drive through, right in my city? Food deserts are not only in third world countries. Over 23 million Americans live in food deserts, and they are in our backyard, next door, in communities you see every day. I'm going to take a step back and explain the basics of a food desert. Food deserts exist when there is a limited supply of an essential resource. And not having enough of these essential resources can create a change in human behavior classified as tunneling. Your body needs calories, and so you focus on getting food immediately. Long-term health concerns do not enter the equation because all that is important is getting food that will provide for your family and getting it now. And another struggle is when that next trip to the grocery store will be. Yes, food deserts are about the poor quality of food, but they're also about the access to food. Imagine going to the grocery store one Sunday afternoon and having no idea when you'll have the money or transportation to return. 
Looking at it from this perspective, choosing the calorie-rich, non-perishable bag of chips would be better to buy than a perishable fruit salad that's healthy, but would spoil within days. These struggles are real, and they are not far away. They're right here in Birmingham, Alabama. Again, these communities exist as close as three miles from where you are sitting right now. People are beginning to address the inhumanity of food deserts. For example, in downtown Birmingham at 20th Street and 3rd Avenue South, a Publix is going to be built and open in the summer of 2016. If you work downtown, you might drive right by it. But more importantly, families living within this area will be able to walk to Publix and buy fresh, nutritious foods for their family. Also, there are projects like food trucks to increase the availability and affordability of healthy foods. This idea came from a Birmingham study funded by an IBM Challenge Grant. It will use decommissioned MAX buses to bring healthy foods to areas identified as food deserts. The buses will travel to these parts of the cities and sell the food in underserved communities. Other projects are as simple as businesses providing the funding to run these food trucks, buying produce at local farmers markets, or even supporting Jones Valley teaching farms. Minimizing food deserts is a movement that will take time, but I believe it ultimately will succeed. I believe it ultimately must succeed. You can help by spreading the word about these organizations and finding ways to get involved in helping food deserts shrink and ultimately disappear so that the great city of Birmingham can thrive for all of its citizens. Think about the children in these deserts who go hungry every day. This isn't an isolated issue. Lack of income, lack of transportation, and lack of awareness continue to stunt our city's growth. We can't continue to look the other way. There's an old saying, you can be part of the problem or part of the solution. What if, working together, we become the solution? Thank you.